नमस्कार आदाब सत्याकाल दोस्तों स्वागत है आपका एक बार फिर से हमारे YouTube चैनल ब्रास फ्यूजन्स पर जहां हम आपके लिए एक बार फिर से लेकर आए हैं एक नया लेसन Now, a union territory we've already looked at and seen is distinct from a state. There is no definition of the state under the constitution. There is a definition of the state under the General Clauses Act, read together with Article three sixty seven of the Constitution. But there is a definition of a union territory under Article three sixty six. Now, in a union territory, if you turn to Article three two thirty. Nine. Okay, I'm just reading it out. Those of you who don't have it with me, handy. Save as otherwise provided by the by Parliament by law. Every union territory shall be administered by the President, acting to such extent as he thinks fit through an administrator to be appointed by him with such designation as he may specify. So normally, initially. some of the union territories were governed by an administrator however in 1963 parliament enacted something known as the government of union territories act 1963 and it allowed different designations to be appointed some places administrator some places like delhi lieutenant governor that happened the 1963 act also did another thing it said in certain mature union territories we may permit a legislative assembly to be popularly elected and these states which have a legislative assembly not all some of not states sorry union territories may also have a chief minister is it necessary to have a chief minister wherever you have a legislative assembly the answer is no so eventually in a nine judge bench decision called the ndmc versus uh, state new delhi municipal corporation versus state this happened in 1995 i think is the ndmc judgment the supreme court in this big unanimous nine judge bench decision noticed that while there is only one category of state under article 246 of the constitution when it comes to union territories there's a whole variety of union territories at one end of the spectrum you have union territories that don't have legislative assembly that are directly uh, administered by a legislator you have some which have a legislative assembly and which are administered by a lieutenant governor and then you have some which have gone transitioned through this and have matured enough for them to transform from being a union territory to a state and that you know as students of law many many have undergone that transition take for instance goa take for instance nagaland take many of our northeastern states they have transitioned from being first by union territories to a state okay so the union territories are of many types so for example after the presidential proclamation of august 5th 2019 you will know that in the erstwhile state of jammu and kashmir they are all union territories but some have legislative assembly some don't and they are not those legislative assemblies that have a chief minister but Delhi and Puducherry are two union territories that have a legislative assembly and also have the chief minister. So, if I was to draw a scale like a continuum, these would be perhaps the highest forms of a union territory: Delhi and Puducherry. Now, if you look at Delhi, and I uh, just because we are all in Delhi right now, and therefore uh, Delhi is a very interesting. Uh, constitutionally a very interesting uh, you know that's why even though you have a chief minister we are not a state there is always a dem- 
demand, if you remember the elections that were held earlier this year, uh, Aam Aadmi Party was saying we want a demand for statehood. And if we are not students of constitutional law, it will appear very strange. Are you chief minister here for state? Why not? Because this is one of those strange union territories which, after the 69th Amendment, now have a chief minister and a legislative assembly. Right. So before this, before these amendments, there was a, in, from 63 onwards, Delhi had a Delhi administration. And we had a metropolitan council. It's a political decision, completely political. Okay, there's no legal point here. Nothing legal. So Delhi had a metropolitan council only. So we would not call them MLAs. We wouldn't call them legislators. We would call them councillors. Okay. Now, people in the MCD are called councillors, but earlier. So the legislative assembly is dealing with other matters of list two and list three because it is a union territory, subject to Article two thirty nine. Whereas only questions of municipal nature, the MCD and the NDMC. You know that we have two municipalities in Delhi, and actually the third one is the Cantonment, which is governed by the Cantonment Act. We don't teach Cantonment Act, but just so that you know. That geographically, with regard to municipal matters such as lighting, street cleanliness, blah blah blah, you have a municipal corporation, and these municipal corporations we have NDMC for the New Delhi area and the MCD for the Greater Delhi. Now, when you have a union territory, whether it is of what I'm calling a mature type, but the mature type is nothing a legal term; it's not a legal term. Okay? So maybe I should not even use it. Even if you have a union territory such as Delhi and Puducherry, which have a legislative assembly and which have a chief minister, in these cases, they have the power to aid and advise. So the question for us is: What is the aid and advice that this chief minister, as elected as part of a legislative assembly and in turn responsible to this? Legislative Assembly. So there is a responsible government. The principles of parliamentary democracy are there. There is a Council of Ministers that is responsible back to the Legislative Assembly. They give aid and advice to the Lieutenant Governor. Where you are don't have this Legislative Assembly and Chief Ministers, in such a case there is no aid and advice. The President directly. Through the administrator, administers that union territory. So, if at all there is an aid and advice, it's an aid and advice of the prime minister, okay, not of any locally elected bureaucracy. The local bureaucracy only is carrying out in the name of the local administrator all the day-to-day -day functions. Now, two thirty-nine tells us that the president shall, through an administrator, to be appointed by him with such designation as he may specify. So, Delhi and Puducherry, it is a legal commission. Uh, sorry, lieutenant commission. Now, two thirty-nine capital A is dealing with Puducherry, and A A is dealing with Delhi. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm only going to focus on Delhi, not Puducherry. Now, quickly, let's look at the provisions, and then we'll come to the case law. And the case law is the five-judge bench decision delivered two years ago on what is the area over which the uh, Kejriwal government could give aid and advice to the LG, and number two, whether the LG has to give concurrence to the decisions of the uh, ministry. Does he have to take aid and advice? And if he has to take aid and advice, over which matter will he take aid and advice from the Delhi Chief Minister? Over which will he take aid and advice from the President of India? Those were all basically the issues. Now, to understand that, look at Article Two Thirty Nine A A. It tells you that I'm looking at A A Clause Two. There shall be a legislative assembly for the national capital territory. And the seats shall be filled by members chosen by direct election. And then it says 
for all other look at sub clause b and all other matters relating to the functioning of the legislative assembly shall be regulated by a law made by parliament and the very important law that we are going to look at is the government of national capital territory of delhi act of 1991 okay government of national of capital territory of delhi act 1991 this is the law made under this constitutional provision which is governing to a great extent the constitutional governance of delhi now if you go a little further look at a a sub clause 3 sub clause a which is actually a very important part of this provision so i am looking at 239 a a 3 a okay capital a capital a 3 small a just so that it's a big provision so we must be clear capitals on letter look at what it says subject to the provisions of this constitution the legislative assembly shall have power to make laws for the whole or any part of the national capital territory with respect to any of the matters enumerated in the state list or the concurrent list so it looks very similar to a state you have power over a state list and a concurrent list but as the supreme court tells us notwithstanding that delhi is still a union territory but then 3 aa 3a says something even more serious in so far as such matters is applicable to union territories except matters with respect to entry 1 entry 2 and entry 18 of the state list which are these entry 1 is the law and order entry 2 is police entry 18 is land with the result the delhi government and the delhi legislative assembly cannot make laws or cannot administer any matter with regard to law and order police and land and therefore that includes delhi development authority which under the dda act has ownership of every non private land in delhi the biggest land owner in delhi is the dpa now our study of ram jawaya kapoor says that if you cannot make a law with respect to a particular entry 239 aa 3a says you have all powers of a state over the state list and the concurrent list except entries 1 2 and 18 which means you cannot make laws over 1 2 and 18 but you can make laws with respect to the other entries as well as the concurrent list and the concurrent list will be read of course subject to 1 2 and 18 not being powers number 2 executive power is coextensive or coterminous with legislative power which means over all those areas over which you can make law you also have a power to exercise and implement the law as well as take any policy decision implement the law if there is a law but even in the absence of the law you can make policy decisions and implement it i have discussed this when i discussed ram jawaya but this is something that keeps troubling students so i'm going to take half a minute and explain it again even if there is no law on a particular point let's say entry 3 okay let's just look at entry 3 of the state list what exactly is it okay entry 3 is talking of officers of the high court technically delhi legislative assembly can make a law on this point but even if there is no law on the point the executive power exists independent of a legislative point all that this article is telling us is the extent but it's not the source of executive power article 73 is giving us the extent of executive power the source of executive power continues to be article 53 and that executive power because of our doctrine of separation of powers is independent of a legislation what is executive power implementing a law but also implementing a policy 
and a policy can be implemented even in the absence of law. I may have no law, but government can decide. We have decided that every road must have a mother dairy milk booth. They can build a mother dairy milk booth on every street. It is a policy decision. It doesn't require a law. The only thing you need to ask is supply of food essentials. If it is belonging to the state list, you have the power to make a policy with regard to that, independent of whether there is a law or not. So that point of Ram Javaya Kapoor, please don't get confused by it. However, sometimes if you are implementing a policy and that policy is going to infringe or take away somebody else's fundamental rights, you may have to bring a law because violation of a right by the state requires a backing of a state law. But there are many areas where the government can act, like in Ram Javaya Kapoor, they decided to print textbooks. They were not violating anybody else's right. They were not saying, Baki log print nahi kar sakte. Nahi? They said, Aapi print karo ji, par hambi is business mein hai. Because of 298. Didn't need a law for that. But because school education is in the state list, they could go ahead and print. That's the point I'm making. Now come back to union territories again. Policy and law. Law means that you're making a law by the state legislature on this list. But executive functions includes implementation of a law and initiation of a policy. So you can decide to have a new education policy, which is recommending to all the universities make examination reform, introduce a choice-based credit system. It doesn't need a legislation. This is a policy measure. You can say, let us have one extra year in schools. Plus two ke jagay, plus three kar dete. Ya plus, minus one kar dete. Whatever it is. These are policy decisions that don't necessarily require a central law or a state law on the subject. This can be done. So the decision to open 20 extra ration shops, the decision to decide that we are going to give old age uh, health insurance to all people below poverty line. It's not a law. It's not a right that I'm deriving from a law. It's a policy decision. This year, Diwali has so instead of 5 kilos of rice through PDS, we do this for 10 kilos. You can do it. There's no law on the call. It's a policy decision. Now, let's come back once again to Article 239. Because you cannot make a law with respect to law and order, police and land in Delhi, the executive power also, the Delhi government has no power over law and order and police, which is why the Delhi police is not under the Chief Minister of Delhi. It is under uh, Home Ministry. The DDA, which controls all the land, is not under the Chief Minister. And this is one of the reasons why, for example, if you want to expand schools in Delhi, there is always this tension because if you want land, you do not get land because unless the central government gives the green signal. Now, this is the tension. However, the real problem has actually arisen in AA4 proviso. Look at AA4. There shall be a council of ministers consisting of not more than 10%. Remember the 10% in the case of center and states, it is not 10 but 15. In union territories with legislative assemblies, 10. There shall be a council of ministers consisting of not more than 10% of the total number of members in the legislative assembly with the chief minister at the head to aid and advise the lieutenant governor in the exercise of his functions in relation to matters with respect to which the legislative assembly has power to make laws. Meaning, they can advise the lieutenant governor over those areas over which lieutenant, uh, the legislative assembly has power to make laws. Simply put, State list, concurrent list, minus entry 1, 2, and 18 of the state list. On those matters, you have the power to aid and advise the lieutenant governor. Except, insofar as he is, or by under any law, required to act 
in his discretion. So, how do I interpret this? One, you can aid and advise over all those matters over which you have power to make law. So, already law and order, police and land get out. But there is another limb to Article AA4, except insofar as he, who is the he, not the Chief Minister, the Lieutenant Governor, except insofar as he is by or under any law required to act in his discretion. So we have to find out, is there any law under which the Lieutenant Governor has to act in his discretion? But for the first part, we are clear that the aid and advice can be with matters covering areas list 2 and list 3, except entries 1, 2 and 8. Then there is a proviso. So 239.4 has three parts. 1, minus 1 to 18, you can aid and advise. Number 2, if there is any law and that law has granted the discretion to the NG to act on his own, you cannot advise. And then comes the proviso. The proviso says, provided that in the case of difference of opinion between Lieutenant Governor and his minister on any matter, on any matter, you can straight away see what does this mean. Does any matter include those areas of list 2 and list 3 over which the main article seems to suggest that you have the power to aid and advise? And if you are aiding and advising after Shamshir Singh, there can be no disagreement. That is it. You can't go against that aid and advice. Then, what is the possibility of difference of opinion? Obviously, should we argue that the difference of opinion should be with regard to those matters over which he acts in his own discretion? But if he acts in his own discretion, then there can be no aid and advice to dispute this cheese cup because the governor is acting on his own discretion. So what are we talking about? And this is the matter that is repeatedly coming back before the Supreme Court. Are you following my point? That the second limb, the final limb, except where the LG has to act under his own discretion under any law, there there is no aid and advice. So how can there be difference of opinion? And with regard to the first part, state and concurrent list, minus 1, 2 and 18, after Shamshir Singh, surely that aid and advice is binding. So, how does it matter that there is any difference of opinion? Therefore, the proviso, and we are trying to understand what exactly the Supreme Court, five judge bench, one judgment of Justice Deepak Mishra for himself, Justice Sikri and Justice Adwilkar, a concurring judgment by Justice Dr. Chandra Chud, and third concurrent judgment of Justice Ashok Bhushan, all of them just dealing with this four, clause four proviso. Now look at that proviso again. Provided that in the case of difference of opinion between the lieutenant governor and his ministers on any matter, the lieutenant governor shall refer it to the president for decision and act according to the decision given thereon by the president. And president doesn't act on his own. He is bound by the inner advice of the central government. Because this is an executive action of the union, executive function of the union. Okay, so. And pending such decision, and pending such decision from the president, it shall be competent for the lieutenant governor in any case where the matter in his opinion is so urgent that it is necessary for him to take immediate action to take such action and or to give such direction in this matter as he deems necessary. So what is this proviso saying? It says, if there is a difference of opinion in this aid and advice, or then the lieutenant governor shall refer it to the president. And he will be bound not by the aid and advice then of the chief minister, but the aid and advice of the president. And we know that the president is bound by the aid and advice of his prime minister and the council of ministers. And pending that, lieutenant governor can decide whatever he thinks require, the matters require. Now, I notice that it's time already, so I'm going to stop here. But I want the following students. I'm going to take up two cases tomorrow. 
I want the following students: Ab Abid Khan, Abhinav Dwivedi, and Abhishek Ankit. These three students will read the NCT judgment, which is there in our classroom materials. Read the judgments of they're all edited, long judgments that they've been edited, and explain to the class tomorrow. I'm going to call on you. And then I want the other these three students. Okay, who are these three students? Antika Priyadarshi, Anuj Kumar, as well as uh, let me come down here, yeah, Chitra Singh and Das Sudhir Kumar. Chitra Singh, Das Sudhir Kumar, independently, you don't have to do because for tomorrow. I want you to read Empuru Sudhakar because I will also be beginning. Uh, these latter four students, Chitra, Das Sudhir Kumar, Antika, and Aman. Uh, is it Aman or whom did I say? Tika and Anuj Kumar will read Empuru Sudhakar and the first three students will read the NCT daily. Okay? And I will ask the questions to six of you so that we will have a conversation. The rest of the class encouraged to read and we will continue tomorrow. Thank you. Yeah, okay. I'll have a doubt. Yeah, Pradeep, I'll take this up tomorrow. Ma'am? Yes? Who is ma this? Ma'am, if you could, ma if you could mark my attendance. Yeah, then. I will. I will. I will. Okay, thank you. नमस्कार आदाब सस्त्रियकाल दोस्तों स्वागत है आपका एक बार फिर से हमारे YouTube चैनल ब्रास फ्यूजन्स पर जहां आज हम आपके लिए लेकर आए हैं एक नया लेसन 